In this video, we're going to go through the Stefan-Boltzmann Law. So let's start by reviewing the Stefan-Boltzmann Law. Luminosity L from a hot, dense object is proportional to the square of radius R and the fourth power of surface temperature T. So here we have a hot, dense object. We're given star vega. And star vega has a surface temperature of 9602 Kelvin and a radius of 2.362 times the radius of the sun. So it's roughly 2 uh, to 2.5 times the radius of the sun. Or equivalently, 1.64 million kilometers, which is equal to 1.64 times 10 to the ninth meters. Now we want to find the power output at the surface. In other words, we want to call it luminosity. So here's the surface of this star Vega, and we want to know what is the power output at this surface. So we need some equations. And the equation we're going to look at is the Stefan-Boltzmann Law equation, which is going to relate the luminosity L from a hot, dense object. So luminosity is on the left. And here we say it's proportional to the square of radius R. So there's your radius R squared and the fourth power of surface temperature T. So there you go, fourth power of surface temperature T. Now we put an equal sign and we put the rest of the equation in. It's 4 pi and this sigma. Sigma is a catch-all constant called the Stefan-Boltzmann constant and it's equal to 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared per Kelvin to the fourth. So now that we know the given and the find and the equations, we know that we want to find the luminosity. So let's go ahead and solve it. So we have our basic equation, our Stefan-Boltzmann equation. Luminosity is equal to parentheses 4 pi. Parentheses, there's your 4 pi. Here's our r squared, so parentheses 1.64 times 10 to the ninth meters, parentheses squared. And then you put your sigma in, parentheses 5.67 times 10 to the minus eighth watts per meter squared Kelvin to the fourth, close parentheses. And then finally put your temperature to the fourth power in, 9602 Kelvin to the fourth. So you have to multiply not only the number squared, but also the letter squared. So let's carry this down. First thing we want to do is carry down our 4 pi. And then we want to go ahead and substitute in 1.64 times 10 to the ninth meters, and we want to square it. So let's go get our Google calculator. 1.64 EE9, and we want to square it. So we look for the X to the Y key and put square in there, and then hit equals, and we get 2.6, roughly 9, times 10 to the 18th. 2.69 times 10 to the 18th. So we substitute that in. 2.69 times 10 to the 18th. And let's just do a mental check here. So we have a mental check. Now 9 to the power 2, 9 times 2 is 18, and sure enough we get 18. And 1.6 double it, sure looks about 2.6. So not only do we have to square the number, but we have to also square the unit. And then we're going to carry down the same 5.67 times 10 to the minus eighth watts per meter squared per Kelvin to the fourth. So make sure you keep your meter squared in the denominator as well as your Kelvin to the fourth. So it's a lot easier to cancel units. Now the next thing we need to do is take the temperature to the fourth power. So here's our temperature, 9602, and we need to raise it to the fourth power. So let's go back to our calculator, clear it, 9602, look to the X to the Y key, but in this time put four. So we have 9602 to the fourth power, and we're left with 8.50 times 10 to the 15th. So we put in there, 8.50 times 10 to the 15th. And remember, you have to not only take the number to the fourth power, but also the letter to the fourth power. 
So it's going to be Kelvin to the fourth. Close parentheses. So now let's do a mental check. We have 9 times 10 to the 3 to the 4th power, so 3 times 4 is 12. So we have roughly to the 15th. Let's do a check of that on our calculator. 9602, so let's clear it. 9602, x to the y, 4th power. We get the same thing, 8.500 times 10 to the 15th. So we have it, we checked it, it is correct. And now let's go ahead and we're going to cancel units. So let's get out a different color. Notice we got meter squared in the numerator. We take out meter squared in the denominator. We got Kelvin to the fourth in the numerator. We got Kelvin to the fourth in denominator. The only thing we're left with is watts. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the W here. Luminosity is power, and sure enough, we have units of watts left. So now let's go ahead and multiply everything out. I could multiply from left to right, but I already have this one already entered into my calculator. So the first thing I want to do is keep this in the calculator of 8.500 times 10 to the 15th, and I'm going to multiply it by 5 times 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8th. So let's go put that in. 5.67, so we're going to multiply it by 5.67 EE minus 8, and then hit enter. So now we got that number. So let's go back to our next calculation. We want to next multiply it by 2.69 to the 18th power. So 2.69, so we hit multiply, 2.69 EE 18 power, hit equal, let's go back to our calculation, and now we need to multiply by 4 pi. So let's go back, we're going to multiply by 4 equal, and we're going to multiply by pi equal. Now we've got our final answer, 1.63 times 10 to the 28th. So it's 1.63 times 10 to the 28th watts. Now that is a high wattage. So the luminosity is this 10 to the 28th watts. So let's try and put this into perspective here. So we would say, if we were looking at the number of light bulbs, let's say number of 100 watt light bulbs, so we want to look at the number of 100 watt light bulbs. So all we're going to do is take this luminosity number and divide it by 100. And we're going to get a value of 1.63 times 10 to the 26. Because we're dividing by 100, which is 10 to the 2. So 28 minus 2 leaves you with 26. So we would need 1.63 times 10 to the 26 100 watt light bulbs to find the equivalent luminosity at the surface of this star Vega. So this gives you an idea of the Stefan Boltzmann law.